Thank you for taking time to view this lab. Today we are going to cover how to create users, uh, put those users into groups, and then create shares and assign permissions to the shares. We will be using a Microsoft Virtual Labs uh, resource to, to uh, create our solution. So I will provide you the link to the Virtual Lab. You go ahead and hit launch. You may have to accept uh, ActiveX controls. The screen that you see now preparing lab may take a few moments so I'll pause the video for just a moment. When the lab resumes you will see this uh, you'll see this uh, dialog box here. Go ahead and leave this option for the clipboard to allow the remote control computer and hit connect. Uh, you'll now see this. It's just giving you some instructions if we were using this lab for the intended purposes. We'll hit close and what we really want to do is we want to go ahead and connect to uh, this second one in the list. It's the a domain controller. So we are in the domain controller. Now what we want to do, first we want to create uh, some users. So in the Windows server we go to start, go to administrative tools, we're going to look for Active Directory Users and Computers. And when you see this Active Directory Users and Computers, you can tell that the computer has Active Directory installed and that uh, the server is a domain controller. A server can be a server without being a domain controller, um, but being a domain controller will mean that a Windows server will have Active Directory. So once we're in here, we navigate to the users folder, and then we can look and we can see which users are currently uh, registered or currently in the domain. What we want to do is we want to create a couple of new users, and then we want to put those users in groups. So first, we will create new users. An easy way is you can just right click in the area over in the uh, right dialog. We can go to new user and we will give the user a name so your first user should be yourself so type your name and then come up with a naming scheme for this exercise uh, we will ignore whatever naming scheme that may already be in place for this, this uh, server that's already installed for us and so the naming scheme that I'm going to use is first name dot last name so any user that I create should follow the same naming scheme Go through here, uh, create a password. By default, the complexity requirements are enabled, um, so give it an uppercase, uh, lowercase letters, and a number. So I will give my password as password with a capital P, and then the number one. And then I'm going to say the user must change password at next login, and I'll leave the others as they are. So it goes through and it tells me my user account is created successfully. If I want to configure additional information, you can double click the user. And it comes in here and there are all these properties that will be listed in the directory uh, for your corporation. So I'll just do this for the first user. So we'll say that this person is the CEO. Uh, their office is in PSC 315. Uh, their telephone number is 2809. Email is Jonathan. Yerby at Woodgrove Bank. Dot net. Web page. you can go through you can set several options in here uh, the profile we could create uh, a home folder for for the users uh, that would redirect wherein they save my documents to a network location which would be backed up it creates more uh, security we can give them mandatory or roaming profiles uh, we can set up different telephone numbers there are 
lots and lots of different options to set up in here. Uh, we can set up which hours uh, that a, a, a user is allowed to log in, um, what folders they're allowed of, which groups, all these things. So we'll go ahead and create this user and create a couple more so we can put them in, in the other uh, groups that we're going to create. So we'll create another user here. So again, sticking with my naming scheme, do that. That. So again, new user, give the user a name. That, create the password. Make sure the passwords match. And one, one last time, we'll do this one more time. So we've created several users, and if you're doing this for an assignment, uh, for me, this will probably be one of the steps, uh, and I'll probably ask you to create a screenshot. So what you would actually do is at this point use either the print screen key or if you have software that will capture the screen. Uh, go ahead, capture what's on the screen. You'll open the Word document, paste the information in here so you can see that the information that we've just created, all the different users that we've created, the information is in here. And this is where you'll this is how you'll actually submit if you're doing this for an assignment for me. Uh, the next step is we want to create some groups. So we just say new and it's pretty intuitive Windows Server. We're just going to say new group and we'll call the first group management. And for ease of use, we'll just we'll stick with global groups and as a security group. Uh, so we create that. We want to create say we're creating a marketing group. Again, keep the defaults, and then we will create. a new support group. Now what we want to do is we want to add members to these groups. So there are many ways to do many tasks within server. Uh, here's one way to do this. So I'm opening the the management group and I go to members and I want to add the CEO to the group. So I can type in the full username if I know it and I do so it's Jonathan dot Yerby and I can hit check names and that tells me that that is a valid user so I hit OK if I try to do that and it's a name that doesn't exist in the directory it will give me a prompt it says name not found so it has to be a name it has to be an account that is in the directory Okay, so we'll just add this user to this group and see marketing. So again, we can go members of, add. You can also do this by typing in portions of names sometimes. Let's try this. So I just typed in part of the name and it found it. So do this.
again just typed in two letters and it found it because there was only one user that had that name so do this okay another way that you can add users to a group is you can actually go to the user account and you can go to the member of and we can add them this way so we want to add this user Varney Haynes to the support group so again I do it the same way I type in the name and hit check names and if I want to add to multiple groups I can also do that so in this case he's added to the support group and the marketing group hit OK hit OK and we can double check that that actually worked by going into the marketing group and we can say members and look there he is we have all members. We have Casey, we have Barney, and Victoria. And the, the, the real use of using groups is when you're assigning permissions. So it makes assigning permissions really easy because you're assigning them to the group rather than individual users. And the last thing we will do quickly is create a network share and then share it. So let's say there's a folder in here called corp. So we want to add the marketing group. to have permission to this folder and we want them to be able to read and see the contents of the folder and then we want the management group to have full control to be able to modify, execute, delete everything so we apply those changes and now those groups the folder is shared uh, the members in the marketing group can read and see what's in the folder. The management group can read and see what's in the folder. Plus, they can modify, change, add, delete anything to that folder. So again, that's a quick overview of creating users, groups, and assigning permissions to a network share. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for your time.